Hello and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today's video is about ratcheting castle nuts. Now that I got your attention with the catchy title of the video, I want to talk about ratcheting castle nuts. Now some people have quoted some of my posts in the past where I talk about how I'm not a fan of ratcheting castle nuts. This particular example on the bench is one of the more popular ones. This one's made by PWS. That noise you hear in the background is Rebel. He's in the shop and he's decided that he wants to make some noise. Back to the content. Um, the ratcheting castle nuts, um, they can be a problem if you reuse them. So if you're going to consider a ratcheting castle nut and you want to follow my advice, I consider them one use only device. And what I mean by that is when they tighten, these teeth right here on the castle nut engage this little tooth right here. And if you install this with the right amount of torque and you have the proper thread class on your buffer tube or receiver extension, things will hold in place. But if you remove the castle nut more than once, this little tooth, this ratchet, will wear flat. And when it wears flat, it loses engagement with the castle nut and doesn't hold as well. So you have to have essentially a perfect storm of proper things being done in order for this to work. You have to have the right torque value. You have to have the proper engagement between these threads and the receiver extension threads, buffer tube threads, and the ratchet has to do its job. If you do all those things, you can trust this. But if you're considering removing your receiver extension, buffer tube, and reinstalling it for whatever reason, this is probably not a good option for you because it's going to lose its ability to hold. Generally speaking, if you measure this, even when it's brand new, the amount of holding ability that one ratchet has, it is about one-fourth the holding power of traditional staking. And traditional staking needs at least two spots done according to the technical data package. Some people only stake once, but people think this is permanent. It's not. You generally can't reuse the end plate, but staking is not permanent. You can break this castle nut loose, but it takes a lot more force, about four times more force to break this free if you have no torque on this castle nut compared to this if you have no torque on it. All things being equal. If you do buy one of these and you want to reuse them, it's risky. If you do that and you want to follow my advice, you can buy a product called Vibratite VC3. If you put this on the castle nut threads and receiver extension threads, it will hold the castle nut in place when that ratchet comes loose or it weakens. It's essentially like a rubber cement. Use this when it's wet. Don't let it dry and then try to install it. You're going to have to fight this product a lot. Use it as a wet thread locker and then let it set up. But it's a great product for this application if you want to reuse it. This stuff isn't cheap. It's not easy to find locally. You usually have to order it on the internet. But Vibratite VC3 is what I recommend in situations where you can't stake. And this is one of them. This doesn't have staking notches. So I prefer the traditional method where you stake, but if you're a fan of ratcheting castle nuts, just be aware of the locking mechanism and make sure that it doesn't wear out on you and you'll have trouble free operation in your AR. As always, I hope you found this video educational and thanks for watching.